What's up guys, this is going to be going over armor tanking, just kind of like I did with my shield video. Just going to be going over the different modules and the different rigs and just talking about armor repair in kind of a general format. But one thing to realize with armor repair, it's, it's a little more efficient when it comes to like the capacitor. And also the armor repairs generally repair more armor HP than shield boosters do, but they're a little slower. That's the thing. And what differentiates armor repairs versus shield boosters is once you activate an armor repair, it's going to consume the capacitor, but you're not going to get the armor HP until the end of the cycle. So one of the important things to do with armor repair is to anticipate your need. Another thing to keep in mind as well is the hull and everything on T1 or the uh, armor on T1 hulls is uh, it's just inherently weaker to explosive and kinetic so you have to kind of like plan if you're running t1 holes you're going to plan accordingly and try to fill those holes and everything like that that's just kind of just how that goes as far as like pros and cons for armor tanking there's a lot more um uh, there's a little bit more modules available to kind of like you can fit out plus they all use low slots so you are able to keep all your mid slots for things like e-war prop mods application mods things like that they're they don't really use a whole lot of cpu and they also use less capacitor than shield boosters as well but and the other thing too is kind of like i guess a downside would be like most armor rigs will slow your ship down as far as like max velocity and things like that so i'm gonna be using the marshall today to just kind of go through the modules and we'll go through the implants we'll talk about skills a little bit and then uh rigs and everything like that the first module we'll talk about is going to be armor hardeners. There's one for each of the resistance types and also our reactive armor hardener. So we'll just kind of look at one of the explosive tech twos. We'll drag it over here and you could scale these with armor compensation skills for each type. So this tech two would give you roughly 50% explosive damage resist. And then if you look at, let's say a reactive armor hardener, it can give you about 15 across the board. The way reactives work is it's going to split 60% resistance across the four damage types and then it'll actually adjust it or it'll adapt to your last uh, type damage that you received. So it allows you to kind of reactively tank based on what's kind of hitting you. The next thing we'll talk about is armor plates. Armor plates are going to be just raw armor HP. But they're going to slow your ship down as far as agility and things like that. So keep that in mind. But you know the equivalency for shield would just be like an extender so you can see it's going to be increasing our overall armor hp by using those and there's various sizes and stuff that you can fit depending on the size of ship that you're trying to fit then you have the armor repairs these come in three different sizes small medium and large depending on what ship type you're running and there's two different kinds there's the regular and then there's the ancillary the ancillaries are going to use the nanat repair pace as a charge and the important thing with the ancillaries, they have once they run out of, they're going to consume nano repair base every time you cycle them. And when they run out, they're going to take it's going to take a minute to reload them. So one of the important things to do with ancillaries is to turn off auto cycle and then also turn off auto reload. And since these are slower, but they have a really good repair amount, you almost always want to run ancils with being overheated. So if you're going to be running ad cells and things like that, you want to try to get your nanite operation, your nanite interfacing, your thermodynamic skills all up and everything. And you'll see a lot of ships that are going to run double either an ad cell and a regular booster and things like that. These are almost always used for burst tank. So you're going to use them for one cycle and you're going to use them wisely. You'll also see other ships that are going to run multiple regular repairs. And if that's the case, you never want them to cycle at the same time. So normally if you have to have them both like running, I usually start the first one, let it go half cycle, then start the second one. So since we get those uh, armor repaired at the end of the cycle, we try to like speed up the amount of work we've got coming in. The next thing we'll talk about is armor resistance coatings. There's one for each damage type and then a multi-spec. So we'll look at the kinetic tech two here. These are going to give about 30% based on skills and things like that. And these are just going to be passive modules that increase the given resistance type. And obviously the multi-spectrum is going to give less, but it's going to spread it across kind of all four. And then you have, in addition to that, you have energized armor resistance membranes. There's one for each and a multi-spectrum. These are going to give you a little bit more, but they're also going to use a little more CPU as well. 
So you can see 42 and then 21.6, all based on skills, obviously. We talked about it in the uh, shield tanking video, but damage control is going to give you some resistances across your shield, your armor, and your hull. In most cases, you want to run one of these. It's just kind of good business. And if you're running anything that can run a um, assault damage control as well, so like assault frigates or um, heavy assault cruisers or things, something like that, then you can run a uh, one of those that gives you a lot of resistance for a short amount of time on a cooldown. Then you have layer armor coatings. These are rarely used because plates and stuff like that are just a little bit more efficient but these essentially are just going to give you these are passive modules that are going to give you hit points based on a percentage you have two different versions you have the layered armor coating and you have the layered energize and the energize you're going to use a little bit more cpu kind of like how our armor resistance coatings did as well we're going to go over these rigs now they're about the same as you would expect from like the shield kind of side auxiliary nano pump 2 this is going to actually give you repair bonus. So it's going to be repair amount on this one. And then you also have a nanobot accelerator. This one is actually going to be cycle time. So it's going to speed up your uh, armor repairs. And then you have reinforcers for each of the damage types as well. And then you have one that gives you remote repair amount augmenter. So this would be for your like remote armor repairs and things. And then the Trimark Armor Pump, which you've know, probably heard of, is pretty popular. This is going to be giving you just raw armor HP. And then you have the Transverse Bulkhead, which is for hull HP. So you can use these to either fill in holes with your resistance. So if we want to, you know, we're running a Tech 1 hole, for instance, and we want to fill our kinetic resistance up a little bit, we just, you know, throw those on. Or if we're strictly running you know and sills and you know, armor repairs and the lows and things like that and we want just more efficiency you can run a nanobot accelerator and then also an auxiliary uh, nano pump as well and that'll give you more more repaired amount and a shorter cycle time we'll go over skills a little bit i don't i rarely run armor ships so a lot of my stuff is not great but as you can see in here we have skills for remote hull repairs and we have kinetic armor compensation this is what's going to help with your energized coatings and your platings and all that stuff so based on whatever you're trying to fill you want to try i try to get all these to four the all the compensation for both shield and armor i try to get them all to four just so they're already trained and good to go repair systems is going to help with the reduction in repair systems duration so it's going to speed up your armor repair cycles and then also you have ones that range all the way up to you know capital remote so this would be your local and then the remote armor repair systems would be your remote and it goes up to capital and things like that I try to just get a lot of these to, especially the compensation skills, try to get those to four. That's just going to increase what you get as far as bonuses for all that stuff. We're going to talk about implants now. The first one we're going to talk about is the RS Tac 6. And what this was going to do, this is going to go, we're going to look at this real quick. It's going to go in your slot six, which normally you might, if you're running like the Omegas for any of the uh, sets, you probably won't be using this one, but it's going to give you a a little bit faster cycle time so if you want a little bit you know faster cycle time on your armor repair that's what you'll use for this and then you have a slot 7 this is going to be for remote armor repairs so this is the ra tech 7 there's different variants of it but this is essentially going to upgrade the operation of remote armor repairs it's going to reduce the but it's essentially going to reduce the capacitor need for those to help you kind of have a little bit more efficiency rp tech 9 You'll probably use this one actually quite a bit, but this is going to give you more armor repaired HP per cycle. So this is going to make your armor repairs more efficient and uh, just repair even more. Another one you'll probably use as well is going to be for your slot 10. It's HG Tac 10. There's different levels of it, but it's going to give you armor hit points. That's going to increase your entire armor HP pool. And then there are two implant sets that you can use. The first one is going to be amulet so you can have high low or mid-grade amulets and what these are going to do is going to increase the bonus to armor hp so it's going to give you more armor hp and then the other set is uh ask Askelpin. i guess that's how you say that Askelpin. and this is going to give you armor repair amount and you can any one of these sets you can mix mid low high everything they're all multiplicative but for the most part I, depending on what you're doing, like if you're running a, a armor ship that just needs like to repair really fast, then you'll run the Askel. And then 
for anything else if you just want raw armor hp then you'll run the amulet you probably you probably heard of amulets before because they're a little bit more widely used the other skills you want to kind of get into as well we'll kind of just go all these are really important actually you know mechanic hull upgrades and we are talking about repair systems all the compensation skills and then the other one is armor rigging so really any ship that you're running look at your rigging skills because any of these rigging skills are going to decrease the downside so if you're running armor ships you want to try to get armor rigging i would i would actually just advise getting as much of these at least shield rigging and armor rigging to four just in case you're running whatever this is going to make all those downsides those drawbacks a lot less and then also um if you're using uh and sills and you're going to be overheating make sure you want to get your nanite your thermodynamics and then also your nanite operation and your nanite interface and you just want to make your repair amount a little bit more efficient hopefully after this video you've got a little bit better understanding about armor tanking and really you have probably less margin when it comes to like with our shield we essentially for shield tanking we're essentially always kind of like trying to repair and kind of mitigate damage on the, the outer layer so your first layer of protection would be your shield with armor ships your shield's going to be pretty much deleted because you're not putting any bonuses towards it so you're going to be running around with zero shield and so once your armor is gone you're in hull you know the you have less kind of a margin uh for error there but there's a lot more modules available for armor tanking that and you also can put them on ships that allow you to do better prop mods because it's shield tank ships they lose slots because they of uh, everything's mid slots so they lose prop mod they lose application slots so they lose e-war slots so that's why you you see a lot of tackle ships you see a lot of pvp ships that run armor tank because they just have all those mid slots completely open for all the fun stuff but thank you for watching and i will see you guys in the next one peace out